welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Giant's Daughter, an adaptation of a Brazilian folktale written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Giant's Daughter Once upon a time, nearby to the lands of normal-sized folks, there was a kingdom of giants. It was ruled by a mighty king, nearly a mile tall, and his subjects were all almost as big. When they walked, the ground shook. When they laughed, the mountains quaked, and when they cried, it was an endless, brutal wind that swept over the land. Unfortunately, the princess had been crying for weeks. You see, she had dropped her favorite cookie, itself bigger than any normal person, into the great river that ran through the giant's kingdom. It dissolved in the rushing water and was swept away before she could grab it back again. She was left with nothing. Not a bite, not a crumb. She cried for another cookie, but it had been the last in the kingdom, so she just kept on crying. She cried all day so loud that the giants could barely go about their business. She cried all night so loud that all the giants jammed cotton in their ears just to sleep. She cried during breakfast and sobbed during lunch and wailed at dinner. On and on it went until all the giants thought they might go crazy and the king was forced to take drastic action. Enough is enough, he boomed so loud his voice rolled out far and wide like a thunderstorm heard by the giants and humans alike. If anyone can make my daughter smile again, They shall have a pot of gold the size of my fist. He held up one hand, nearly the size of a cottage home. And if anyone can make her laugh, they can have half of my kingdom to rule as their own. Halfway across the country, in the land of the normal-sized folks, a young boy named Felipe heard the giant king's offer. He thought that a pot of gold sounded fine, and to rule a kingdom sounded even finer, but he had never been very funny. He didn't know any jokes, and he wasn't even good at making funny noises. He was good at playing the violin, but it wasn't a very happy instrument. His songs were beautiful, but usually slow and sad. He played them often for Larry, his pet sheep, and his only friend in the world. Well, Larry, he said after thinking about the giant's offer, maybe we can try something a little happier for once. He took his violin and began to play. At first, it was his normal slow and mournful song, but then he picked up the pace and moved it from a minor key to a major key. It still wasn't funny, but it was definitely more upbeat. What do you think, Larry? The sheep began to bob in time with the music slowly shifting from hoof to hoof. Felipe began to play a little faster, finding the groove now. He sped up until Larry was dancing, his great woolly coat shaking in time to the music. Yay! There we go! He shouted. Bah! Larry shouted back. Well, thought Felipe, a dancing sheep is at least a little funny. Maybe it would get me a smile. Even if I don't win the kingdom, it might be worth it just to see a princess giant smile. Okay, Larry, he said. Three, two, one, let's jam. Playing and dancing, they started down the road. As they got going through the countryside, a stray cat heard them coming. Usually, the feisty feline avoided strangers, but that music. She found herself walking to the beat, her tiny tail twitching in time. Hey, cat, Felipe called. I like your moves. Come with us to see the princess giant or the giant princess. Who really cares? It's both, I guess. The cat jumped up on Larry's back and kept on dancing. She was clearly along for the trip. All right, Felipe said to himself. A dancing sheep and a crazy cat. Maybe that'll make the princess laugh. He added a little more to his melody, and now it was really making the animals move. They paraded into the jungle, a tangle of dense, dark vegetation. 
They were surrounded quickly by wild, chattering monkeys from all sides. For a moment, Felipe felt afraid. But he kept the rhythm going strong, and soon the wild monkeys were dancing in their dozens. Monkeys, he called. Wild with style. Come on with us to see the giants. The monkeys chattered in joy and dropped from the trees. They fell in line behind Felipe and Larry the sheep and the cat. All right, Felipe said to himself. A dancing sheep and a crazy cat and some moving monkeys. Maybe that'll make the princess laugh. He walked a little taller and added another wrinkle to his music, really getting the hang of this whole happy thing. The sound flowed through him now, and his fingers bent to the bow like he was an expert archer. Soon, they passed from the jungle and heard a terrible rattling. What's that? asked Larry the sheep. It sounds like skeletons. Or old bones, said the cat. Or like, clack, 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 clacked the monkeys. They rounded a bend and saw it was a giant armadillo. The music had him boogieing, and his armored plates jittered and chimed against themselves. Armadillo, Felipe said, sawing his violin like a lumberjack. Arma don't mind if you do, ooh. The armadillo joined the line behind Felipe and Larry the sheep and the cat and the monkeys. Okay, Felipe said to himself. A dancing sheep and a crazy cat and some moving monkeys and a rattling, rattling armadillo. Maybe that'll make the princess laugh. He started to strut a little, feeling the melody move him. The animals started to stomp out a beat and Felipe flexed the music to match. It was getting funkier by the minute and none of them seemed much to mind. Soon, they passed a herd of darting deer being tracked by a pack of tawny tigers. The predators and prey both stopped their foot chaining and started grooving when they heard Felipe's playing. Deer and tigers, he said. War's a boar. Quit the fighting and come with us to the land of the giants. They danced right on over, side by side, no one trying to eat anyone else, not even a nibble. Okay, Felipe said to himself. A dancing sheep and a crazy cat and some moving monkeys and a brattling, rattling armadillo and some darting deer and tawny tigers. Maybe that'll make the princess laugh. It was pretty funny, but could he do even better? He looked at the countryside before him, animals at every turn, and he smiled. He would keep the party rolling, and he'd win that kingdom. Meanwhile, back in the land of the giants, the king was getting bored. His generous offer had drawn out all the giant jesters and the colossal clowns and even the copious comedians. They threw pies and tumbled and farted and fell and did every trick they knew. The princess watched it all and didn't so much as smile, not even a lip twitch. She just kept on crying. Out, the lot of you, the king cried, slamming his heavy hand on the table. This is the best you can do? Doesn't a one of you have something halfway funny to say? Hey, uh, I have a joke, said one of the comedians. Fine, let's hear it. Where do you find a giant snail? A snail? I don't know. Where? You find a giant snail at the end of their giant finger. <laughs> All right, yeah. The princess started to cry even harder. Guards, remove this man. The guards dragged him away. Suddenly, from outside, there was a noise. No, not just a noise, a song. And not just a song, but a funky song that made a few of the giants start tapping their massive toes. Tap, 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 echoing through the land like boom, boom, boom. What's going on? The king cried, rushing to the window. The princess, still crying, was curious enough to come over too. Outside, they saw the strangest sight. It was Felipe, sawing so violent on his violin, it looked like it might burst into flames. Behind him was a mad menagerie, a zany zoo, a wild wumpus of animals. Felipe was followed by Larry the sheep, 
a crazy cat and some moving monkeys, a brattling, rattling armadillo and some darting deer and tawny tigers like before, but he'd added some snazzy snakes and spinning spiders, some birdie bats and some batty birds, a crocodile with a smile and a deep in thotamus hippopotamus. And that was just all they could see from the window. There were even more stretching back over the horizon. They all walked by the castle, each one dancing harder than the last. The princess looked on, eyes wide. She was so surprised that, for the first time in weeks, she had stopped her colossal crying. Then, as the king looked on with hopeful eyes, she smiled, a wide, giant smile. And then, wonder of wonders, the princess laughed, and all the land shook with its thunder. Felipe was rewarded with half of the kingdom, just as the giant king promised. All the animals chose to stay and live nearby, and as a thank you for the gift, they'd put on a parade past the castle each and every day. Felipe still played his sad music sometimes, but usually he found it more fun to jam something loud for his friends. And together, they all danced happily ever after. The End Thanks for listening!